All right, here are the two Marvins. This guy's going to run out of uh, dust space here. Let's move it back. Now he's not glued and hooked together yet. Parts are just stacked that way. Let's shut, uh, shut you down. Let's talk about you. All right. Now he's just kind of chattering there because I wanted to be able to show you what's inside. And of course, in order to take it apart, I got to be able to not have things glued down permanently. So the head is being held on with some uh, tape right now. And um, the two wires from the head, the two wires from the battery pack, and there's two wires from the motor. They all just meet together in two places, which I did solder. And I put a little bit of scotch tape around them just for this temporary purpose of doing this video. What I want to do, I think, is um, spray paint this uh, gray body. If I can, I'm not going to go buy any paint. I'll just go out and look out in the shop. If I've got something that looks more silver gray, I'm going to go ahead and spray it more of a silver gray instead of this dark gray. And then I'll put uh, the aluminum trim foil around the neck and the arm rings like they show and maybe do a little paint work there. I haven't decided yet. But then I'll... Uh, kind of secure everything together with a little bit of glue. <clears throat> so I thought before I went that far ahead, I might as well show you where we're at here and what part are we on on this. This is this be part five of the build. The Hitchhiker's Guide, the BBC version of Marvin. And um, I think I'll have to lay it down on here and I'll probably be bumping into this camera. Let's see. If I move this tripod leg over here, like so. Alright, let's see how this goes. If I can weasel my body in there. So there's the tape I had holding the head down. And let's uh, zoom in. Those are the connections right there that I need to... Uh, unsolder if we're going to separate this thing so you can see what's going on. The only reason I put tape on there is so that the parts wouldn't short together, but they are soldered, so that means I'm gonna have to not be really soldered but twisted. So the head we've talked about in the, uh, let's get rid of the zoom now, we've talked about in the other videos, it's hollow, I put a color changing LED right behind the nose aiming back so it could reflect off the foil tape that I put in there and be seen through the eyes. There is a current limiting resistor on it as well, just to make sure that, uh, well it didn't need to run it real hot but I don't want to drain the batteries or damage the color change. On the uh, body side of it, I went ahead and since there's enough room between the battery holder and the opening, I ran the positive lead from the battery pack down and threw a little hole on the side to the switch, then another red wire back up the side so that the two battery leads could poke out the top and, and not be possibly involved in getting uh, mixed in with any of the mechanics down below. So speaking of the mechanics down below, as you can see the little right angle gear motor did arrive that I ordered from uh, eBay and it was much cheaper. And it was the way to go. Originally I ordered these when I was doing th this version of Marvin because I thought I'd do a build video for that but there wasn't any great interest in seeing it and it's a lot of work doing a build video so I probably won't. But that's when I had ordered the motor so it's been it's been about two weeks for them to arrive. And uh, you can see the cams push in from the sides. That's why I put these holes in here. 
and uh, everything lined up right so I didn't have to remake the leg linkages or any of that kind of stuff. Um, if I get a couple of alligator cords, a couple clips, I think we can set it up so you can see the mechanics operating. Let's just uh, extend our two motor wires if we can. And then just use the battery pack that's in the body. Like so. And so. I'll have to zoom in a little maybe, huh? Make it easier for you to see, so you can see what's going on. So you can see all the two cams you're on. Okay, let's pull it back some. And you can hear the ratchets and the feet working. So, I think that's it for this part, and what did I say it was? This is part five, so we'll be back in part six, if I can find some spray paint out there. I'll uh, paint these parts, and we'll see how that looks. Maybe I'll tear this down a little bit more now, because it might not have that chance later. I'm going to um, pop the cams off, just using this. I could use a screwdriver or just about anything. You can see here's one of the cams. It's round, it's got a flat position on it, and the shaft has a flat. So you just have to make sure you put the cams on, you know, so they're out of phase from side to side so it'll walk. But other than that, they push in through the big holes. The motor's gonna fit tight. Um, try a flat blade screwdriver. See if we can uh, finagle, finagle the motor to come out here easily. Getting some movement. Sorry if the camera work isn't showing you much, but just hang with me here for a second. All I'm doing is popping the motor out of the 3D printed frame and trying to remember how I got it in there. One way or another I was able there we go. Was able to turn it. You can't go straight in because you can see the the shaft on the motor is wide. So basically you feed one side in first kick it around and then feed the, the other side in and just snap it on back into there. Now as far as this part goes, I told you this was uh, three millimeter rods that I was using as the axles. Some of it's threaded, some of it isn't. It's just whatever I found laying around in the shop. And you simply just have to cut those long enough so that they come to each side but don't extend further or you wouldn't be able to push the body into it. And then you should be able to remove the legs from the frame like so. And now you can kind of see this one leg linkage here in the front is the one that drops down through through the center of the foot and it pins underneath this top foot shell it's pinned with a three millimeter pin and the back of the leg just like there's a hole in this solid piece there's a hole and it's pinned in the rear there the uh, two ratchet wheels are both identical and there's no forward or backward on them I designed so you can drop them in either way the little ratchet piece itself is 3D printed fits into a slot 
and you glue it so it can only go in one place. You can't get it in wrong. Using uh, rubber O-rings, again just from the uh, Harbor Freight rubber O-ring kit, but it's from China. You can find rubber O-ring kits uh, online in case you don't have a Harbor Freight in your country or your neck of the woods. And of course there is a left and a right leg because of this uh, drive and there's a left and a right foot. But uh, there you have it all torn apart and um, hopefully in the next one it'll be all together and complete. So cross your fingers on that one.